Typically, sales analyst is responsible for data analysis and interpretation, collection of sales data from customer relationship management systems, identifying sales trends and patterns, monthly, quarterly, and annual reporting to the executives and management, as well as influencing creation and timing of promotional strategies, tracking sales campaign, defining sales roadmap, and a lot of other tasks. Hi there, this is Vadim Mikhalenka from Online Training for Everyone. And in this video, I would like to help you get ready and pass interview and employment assessment test. Typical questions we see on the test include analytical and problem solving questions, business math skills questions, patterns questions, charts and graphs, math and calculation, logical interpretation and reasoning, data interpretation and analysis questions, as well as a lot of others. Employment assessment test typically used in the jobs that require analytical and problem solving skills. These types of tests typically very important for the candidates that may need to demonstrate business acumen skills and business decision making skills in the future as part of their job. Let me share with you some best practices on how to get the most out of the video you're about to watch. You can watch this video as many times as you need to better understand the material. Consider watching from the beginning to end to make sure you didn't miss anything and have a good comprehension of the material. Practice questions and answers presented. Make sure you pause on the question and see if you can come up with the answer. And as usual, drop us a line and ask any questions and comments. In this video, you will learn about typical questions and answers typically asked during the test to validate candidates' knowledge and experience. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this and we'll make sure to deliver it to you in the future. Also, please consider subscribing to Online Training for Everyone. With every video that we make, we help you get ready and get hired for your dream job. And now, let's go ahead and jump straight to the questions. Let's take a look at the tricky question you might often see as part of employment assessment test. John spent 30% of his earnings last month on rent and 40% less than what he spent on rent to purchase a new dishwasher. What percent of last month's earnings did John have left over in your four different choices? Choice A, 30%, choice B, 40%, choice C, 52%, and choice D, 70%. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see how we can calculate correct answer together. As you might see here, the key would be to calculate the cost of dishwasher. And calculation of cost of dishwasher is based on the calculation of the rent. If you look at the initial problem, the earnings could be represented as 100%. Rent would be 30%. If you subtract rent from earnings, the leftovers will be 70%. But in addition to rent, John also purchased a dishwasher, which is 40% less than he spent on rent. 40% less means 1 minus 0 0.4, which is represented by 0 0.6. So to calculate cost of dishwasher, we would need to multiply 30% by 0.6, which would be an equivalent of 18%. Next step would be to calculate how much John spent on rent and dishwasher. And this could be calculated by adding up 30 plus 18, which would be an equivalent of 48%. And to calculate what was actually left, we need to subtract 48 from 100, which would be an equivalent of 52. So John has left over 52% of his last month's earnings after he paid for rent and paid for the dishwasher. So the correct answer is choice C. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Let's look at the tricky question you might frequently see as part of employment assessment test. Determine the missing number in the pattern. You have four numbers presented and you need to determine number five. The numbers you have presented are one, 8, 22, 50, and you need to determine the next number out of four possible choices. Choice A, 96. Choice B, 106. Choice C, 116. And choice D, 126. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see how we can get to the correct solution together. As you might be well aware, behind any pattern number, there is a formula. For the next number, we will use NN in the formula, and for the previous numbers, we will use shortcut PN. So next number in the formula would be previous number plus 6 plus previous number again, 
which means that the next number in the formula could be represented previous number multiplied by 2 plus 6. So let's calculate the following numbers. 1 plus 6 plus 1 equals 8. And this is how number 8 was calculated. 8 plus 8 equals 16, plus 6 would be 22. 22 plus 22 equals 44, and plus 6 would be 50. So the next number in the pattern would be 2 multiplied by 50, which would be 100 plus 6, which would be an equivalent of 106. So the correct answer is B. Hopefully you've nailed this question. And now I would like you to try a question which tests your knowledge in patterns. If you know the answer, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video and I'll provide you with my feedback. Determine the next number in pattern and you have series of numbers 2, 4, 12, 48, 240 and you need to determine the next number out of four possible choices. Choice A, 1200. Choice B, 1250. Choice C, 1360. And choice D, 1440. Do you think you know the answer? Please post it in the comment section of this video and I'll provide you with my feedback. Thanks for participating. Let's look at the tricky question which confused a lot of applicants in the test. If a train in motion increases its speed by 30% and then increases the speed by 10%, what percent of the original speed is the total increase in speed? And you have four possible choices. Choice A, 10%. Choice B, 40%. Choice C, 43%. And choice D, 140%. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see how we can solve this challenge together. To solve this problem, you need to calculate based on the original speed. If the original speed is 1, then the initial increase in speed would be 1 multiplied by 30%, which is an equivalent of multiplying by 1.3, which would be 1.3. The total increase in speed then would be 1.3, which is the speed after first increase, multiplied by 1.1, which is an increase by 10%, which would be an equivalent of 1.43. So the correct answer is choice C, 43%. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar questions in the test. Pattern questions are probably the trickiest on the test. Let's see how we can solve this challenge together. Identify the pattern and fill in the blank. And you have four numbers presented and you need to determine number five. The numbers presented are 1, 5, 13, 29, and you need to determine the next number in the pattern. And you have four different choices. Choice A, 51. Choice B, 61. Choice C, 73. And choice D, 83. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see how we can solve this challenge together. To answer the pattern question, we need to identify the formula. In our formula, next number will be represented as an N symbol previous number will be represented as PN symbol, and the number count, which is number in pattern, will be represented as such. So the formula for next number will be previous number plus 2 in the power of number count. So for example, the first number is 1. 1 in the 2 power of 2, and 2 is the next number in pattern, would be 1 plus 4 equals 5. 5 plus 2 in the power of 3 would be 5 plus 8, which is an equivalent of 13. 13 plus 2 in power of 4 would be an equivalent of 13 plus 16, which would be a 29. And the final number in pattern would be 29 plus 2 in the power of 5, which would be 29 plus 32, equals 61. So the correct answer here is B, 61. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar questions in the test. And now I would like you to try a question which tests your knowledge in patterns. If you know the answer, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video and I'll provide you with my feedback. Determine the next number in pattern and you have series of numbers 2, 4, 12, 48, 240 and you need to determine the next number out of four possible choices. Choice A, 1200. Choice B, 1250. 
choice C, 1360, and choice D, 1440. Do you think you know the answer? Please post it in the comment section of this video and I'll provide you with my feedback. Thanks for participating. Let's look at the tricky question you might frequently see on the test. When Bob imported certain goods for distribution in England, he paid 7% import tax on the portion of the total value of the item in excess of $1,000. What was the value of the goods if Bob paid $87.50 of the import tax? And you have four different choices. $1,700, $1,875, Choice C, $2,250, and choice D, $2,875. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see how we can get to the correct answer together. Let's first make sure we understand the problem. The first $1,000 of imported goods is tax-free, so Bob didn't pay anything on the first $1,000 of imports, and he paid $87.50 of import tax on the remaining goods. So let's calculate what amount was taxed. To do that, let's use a formula to calculate the values. $87.50 to 7% is the same as X to 100%. This formula would allow us to calculate X, which would be an equivalent of $87.50 multiplied by 100 and then divided by 7. The final value that we will get would be $1,250, which means that the total value of imported goods would be 1,000, which is tax-free, plus 1,250, which is the calculated value, which would be an equivalent of $2,250. So the correct answer is choice C, $2,250. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar types of questions in the test. I'm sorry for the interruption, but I would like to ask you to participate in our daily assessment test challenge. I post new questions regularly as part of online training for everyone YouTube channel community tab. I give you opportunity to try and answer this question yourself. We post answers and explanations to the question in the comments next day. Please make sure to check it out and test your knowledge. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Let's look at the assessment test question. You might get as part of the aptitude test when you're applying for managerial position or position with financial institutions. Below table shows exchange rates in British pounds. How many more Hong Kong dollars could you buy with 1,000 British pounds in 2019 compared to 2020? And there are four choices, 170, 180, 150, and 160. What do you think is the correct answer here? Let's take a look. To answer these types of questions, you need to understand the data that's being provided. In this data, the source and the base currency is British pounds. So the conversion rates here are for British pounds. Hong Kong dollars, you could buy with one British pounds, you can buy 10.11 in 2019, and you can buy 9.95 in 2020. The first step to solve this type of problems is that we need to understand the difference between the value of Hong Kong dollars in 2019 and 2020. And for that, we need to subtract 995 from 1011. After we subtract, we get the value of 0 0.16, which represents the difference between the Hong Kong dollar conversion rates for 2019 and 2020. But the question asks us to calculate the difference for 1,000 pounds. So the next step, we need to multiply this value by 1,000. And once we're done with multiplication, we'll get to value of 160 Hong Kong dollars. So the answer is, you can buy 160 more Hong Kong dollars in 2019 than you could buy them in 2020. Let's look at the alternative way to do it. You can calculate the total cost of buying Hong Kong dollars in 2019 by multiplying 1,000 by 1011, and then calculate the same value for 2020 when you multiply 1000 by 995. And then you calculate the difference, which would be an equivalent of 160 Hong Kong dollars. Hopefully you've got this one right. A lot of people are interested in asking me, how can I help others? 
One of the ways you can help is by sharing the latest questions you see on the interview and assessment test. Please share the questions you've encountered as part of the test in the comment section of this video. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. A lot of times you might get a question in the test which validates your knowledge of logical reasoning. We're looking at a sample of this type of question. Which conclusion follows from the statements below with an absolute certainty? None of the stamp collectors are engineers, that's statement one, and statement two, all the runners are stamp collectors. And there are four possible choices. All stamp collectors are engineers. No stamp collectors are runners. Some runners are engineers, and engineers are not runners. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can get to the correct answer together. There are three groups of people referenced in the statements. Runners, stamp collectors, and engineers. The best way to answer this question is to draw a circle for each one of the logical groups. The first statement in the question, none of the stamp collectors are engineers which puts stamp collector circle outside of the engineer circle. Second statement is, all runners are stamp collectors, which allows us to put runner circle inside of the stamp collector circle. After we have the visual representation of each group in the diagram, like we have here in the slide, we can analyze possible choices and the answers. And once we go through the analysis, we can exclude incorrect choices. Choices A, B, and C are not correct. Let's recap. The best way to answer these types of questions is to draw a simple diagram. Once you draw the diagram, you exclude incorrect answer and find the correct answer. The correct answer for this question is D. Engineers are not runners. Let's look at the simple question, which tests your knowledge of logical reasoning and patterns. Bob is using a new set of golf clubs. With an 8 iron club, the ball travels an average distance of 100 yards. With a 7 iron, 108 yards. With a 6 iron club, 114 yards. How far will the ball go if Bob uses a 5 iron club? And you have four choices, 120 yards, 119, 118, or 117. Do you think you know the correct answer? Let's see if we can nail this question and get to the correct answer together. When you read through the question carefully, you see the pattern here. For every iron reduced, the ball travels for longer distance. For example, 8 iron club is 100 yards, 7 is 108, and then 6 iron is 108 plus 6, which is 114. So the first increment was by 8, and the second increment was by 6, which is 8 minus 2. So we can reasonably conclude that with each club with a lower number, the ball travels farther by the distance between the number of the previous two clubs minus 2 yards. So the next value would be 114 minus 108, which is 6, minus 2, which is 4 yards, and 114 plus 4 is equals 118. So the correct answer is C, 118 yards. Hopefully you've nailed this question. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you know somebody who is looking for the job and will benefit from this video, can you please share this video with them? This is going to help them to get ready for the job interview and assessment test and help them get hired for their dream job. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And now let's continue and get you ready for the job interview and assessment test. Now let's look at the question which tests your knowledge of working with shapes, patterns, and numbers. Select an arrow which logically belongs in the rectangle with the question mark. Here on the screen, you see three by three box. Each row of the box and each column of the box has arrows. One arrow is missing. Which arrow do you think is missing? The key here is to identify the pattern. Each row and each column contains unique arrows. In the first row, we have arrow pointing to the right, upper right, and then to the upper left. Then upper left, right, and upper right. So here we have upper right, and then we have arrow pointing to the upper left, 
and what's missing is the arrow pointing to the right. And that would be the right answer. And the arrow pointing to the right would be choice A. And this is the explanation. So each row has three arrows. All three arrows are directed to three directions. And they are unique. According to the pattern, correct answer is A, because arrow which is directed to the right is missing in the third row. Hopefully you've got this one right. Now let's look at the very complex question which you see a lot during logical reasoning tests, psychometric tests, and the numerical reasoning tests. Find the correct shape to continue the series. And what we have here, we have three by three matrix with uh, eight shapes populated and one shape is missing. There are four choices as usual, but in order to, for you to calculate the right shape, you need to determine the pattern. And in fact, there are two patterns here on this screen. Can you figure it out? Do you know what the right answer is? As I mentioned, there are two patterns here. One is there is a pattern for the shape. Which shape would you choose? And second pattern is the pattern for the lines. And where is the right location for the line itself? Now let's go through the detection of the shape pattern first. So the shape pattern is triangle, square, and then the circle. Right? So triangle, square, and the next one would be the circle. So we have a circle that's uh, the right value here, but all of this other circle. So this was helpful, but not by much. But it just tells us that we are detecting the first pattern. And here, if you want to confirm, we have square, circle, and then triangle. Now, the most important part here is to determine on which side of the shape the lines should be located. And what we have here, we have four locations, as you can see in the answer. One location on the top, right, left, and bottom. So how would you know where's the right location for the circle shape? So let's look closely here and let's detect the pattern here for the line location. The line location starts with the bottom, right, and then top. So you see it's going counterclockwise. So if, if you imagine the clock with the clockwise uh, rotation, then this would be counterclockwise. And let's see if we are correct and we have a pattern here. So we have bottom, right, top, then we have left, bottom, so that still matches the counterclockwise pattern. And then we have left, bottom, right. So I think the missing shape here would be the one before the left, which would be on the top. So the right answer in this case would be A, because here we have a circle which matches the circle's pattern, and then we have lines located at the top. Let's verify to confirm that. And as you can see, the correct answer is A. So let's recap. There are two patterns you need to detect in this assignment. Patterns for the shapes and pattern for the line location. Shapes are displayed in the particular order. Triangle, square, circle, that's really the pattern for the shapes. And pattern for lines are in a counterclockwise order. So correct answer is A. Hopefully you've got this one right. You will see a lot of these types of questions in the assessment test. And now here's the question for you to try. If you know the answer, please make sure to post it in the comment section of this video and I'll respond with my feedback. Jack's phone provider charges him $30 for the first 45 minutes of call each month, plus 75 cents for every additional full minute of calling after that. If Jack's total bill last month was $41.25, approximately how many minutes did he spend calling? In your four different choices. Choice A, 53. Choice B, 57. Choice C, 59. And choice D, 60. If you know the answer, please post it in the comment section of this video. Thanks for participating. A lot of times, number sequences are used to test candidates' abilities on the test. We are looking at one of these types of questions. Which number logically follows this number series? And we have a series of numbers. 4, 6, 9, 6, 14, 6. And we need to determine the next number. We have four choices. Choice A, 6. Choice B, 17. Choice C, 19. And choice D, 21. Do you think you know the answer? Let's see if we can get to the correct answer together. The best way to answer these types of questions on the test is to determine the pattern. You see that there are two patterns. One is pattern of number 6, which is in between of every other number. So we have 4, 6, 9, 6 again, 14, 6 again. And once we determine this pattern, we see that the pattern 
of numbers in between sixes is increasing by 5. So we have 4 increasing by 5, which leads to 9. 9 increasing by 5, which leads to 14. So to determine the next number in the pattern, we need to increase 14 by 5, which would be 19. So the correct choice here is C. Let's recap. The numbers in between sixes increase by 5, while the sixes remain constant. The correct answer is choice C, which is 19. Hopefully you've nailed this question. A lot of times you might get a question in the test which validates your knowledge of meanings of English words. We're looking at the sample of this type of question. Which answer expresses the meaning of the word reassuring best? And we have four choices. Compassionate, comforting, explanatory, and meddlesome. Do you think you know the answer? To answer this question, it helps to understand the meaning of the word reassure. And reassure typically means removing doubts or fears for someone. Considering this, reassuring does not mean showing compassion, explaining something, meddling in his or her affairs. So the correct answer to this question is choice B, comforting. Let's recap. To answer this question correctly, you need to understand the meaning of the source word. And in the second step, exclude words that do not match the meaning of the source word. The correct answer here is choice B, comforting, which is very similar to meaning of the word reassure. Hopefully you've nailed this question. And if you're looking for more practice exercises with similar questions, please make sure to check out my ebook in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. I encourage you to check out our daily question challenge in the community section of this channel. I also recommend that you check downloads in the description section of this video. Please also check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. I would encourage you to share this video with other people that might be looking for the job. This will help them to get prepared and pass assessment tests faster. Please consider subscribing and following this channel. We have a community of great people helping each other to get ready and pass the test. Please leave questions, comments, or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your interview and assessment test. Thanks for watching.